So we are continuing with our series of yogic practices focusing on the development of the upper body, mainly uh, trying to avoid or correct muscular imbalances like the upper cross syndrome. So if you haven't checked the video on upper cross syndrome, please do check that out. Uh, the, the video link is in the description below. Uh, in that video, I have clearly explained that the upper cross syndrome is a muscular imbalance which is associated with hyperactive lower chest muscles as well as hyperactive back of the neck and back of the head muscles. So we have already looked at certain practices right from class number 11. We have looked at certain practices that will allow us to stretch and extend the, the chest muscles so that it relaxes the hyperactivity in the, in the lower chest muscles. So now the next set of practices will be uh, yoga practices which focus on stretching and lengthening the back of the neck and back of the head muscles so that it relaxes the hyperactivity uh, in the back of the neck muscles and back of the head muscles. So that is also uh, one of the important things that we need to do while trying to uh, avoid or correct this muscular imbalance known as upper cross syndrome. So the next set of practices uh, will be class number yoga practice class number 16 the halasan which is the low posture and also the shivasan which is uh, which is the shiva posture uh, one thing that i need to add over here is that this is yoga practice class number 16 do not directly try to attempt this posture without going through the previous practices because your body weight might be too high and if you directly practice these practices you might enjoy your neck muscles so it is always better that you follow the proper sequence of uh, practices so this is class number 16 so first make sure that you are able to do most of the practices up until class number 15 only then should you actually try and attempt these postures so let's have a look in the supine position bring the legs together palms facing towards the floor then this is the easier way of going to the posture where you simply fold the knees and bring the legs over the head and then finally straighten the knees and try to touch the toes on the floor over the head. Then the difficult way of going into the posture is if you have strong abdominal muscles you can simply keep the knees straight and then contract the abdominal muscles and bring the legs parallel to the floor over the head and then slowly allow the lower back to relax as the toes come closer and closer to the floor due to the, due to the force of gravity. In both the cases, the palms will be facing against the floor uh, and uh, you'll be pressing the palms against the floor and going into the posture. In the final position, obviously, uh, the whole weight will fall on the shoulders, the back of the neck and the back of the head. The whole point of this posture is there should be no, no gap between the floor and the back of the neck or the back of the head so that the whole body weight falls not only falls on the shoulders and the back of the neck and the back of the head but it also gives the back of the neck and the back of the head the nice stretch that it needs. The, the stretching of the neck muscles, the back of the neck muscles will allow uh, the reduction and thus the removal of any hyperactivity in those areas. Now these postures come under a special category because uh, they, they are supposed to be practiced uh, three times and they are supposed to be maintained for a maximum duration of uh, five minutes. So this is the halasan or the plow pose. While releasing the posture too, uh, you simply raise the toes above the floor making the legs parallel to the floor 
and then without raising your head you slowly bring the hips down to the floor and then keeping the knees straight as much as possible you slowly relax the abdominal muscles and allow the legs to come down to the floor the other posture is shivasan which is similar to halasan the only difference is that you'll be interlocking the fingers and you'll be folding the knees and the interlocked palms will be pressed against the floor in such a way that the whole weight of the body and the hips will be shifted towards the head so that the knees can comfortably reach the floor and the thighs can comfortably touch the respective chest muscles the head will be between the two knees and you keep pressing the interlocked palms against the floor so that the hips remained pushed upwards towards the head your feet will be relaxed and you you ensure that more and more weight falls on the back of the neck and the back of the head this will create more stretch in the back of the neck and the back of the head even more than uh, the stretch that you feel in halasan as you can see this is called shivasan because uh, it resembles the symbol of lord shiva which is the the stone of lord shiva the shiva linga so that's why it's called the shivasan and uh, also you ensure that you maintain both the postures the halasan as well as this shivasan with normal abdominal breathing and even this posture is maintained for a maximum duration of 5 minutes and it is practiced 3 times this posture along with halasan will further stretch the back of the neck muscles and maintaining it for 5 minutes is what will ensure that any hyperactivity in the back of the neck and back of the head is completely released that is any tightness in the back of the neck or back of the head will be completely released when you maintain these postures for 5 minutes and that to 3 times so that is it for now i hope you understood how you supposed to practice these postures and uh, thus you'll be able to uh, completely avoid or or completely correct the tightness in the back of the neck or back of the head which is one of the features of a muscular imbalance known as the upper cross syndrome also the way you release the posture is similar to the way you release the halasan posture so that's it uh, and thanks for watching